Right, you're probably wondering what on earth I'm doing. Basically, I'm using this to get this piece of metal clamped on here level. Um, I know where the middle of my banjo is, or I will in a minute, because I'll measure it. So I can use the set square to find the exact middle of this, then run using the set square up to here and mark the centre of this. And the reason is I'm putting the fairing on and if the tip of the fairing is a bit to one side or the other, it'll just look stupid. So I'm going to do it the measuring way and step back and actually look at it. Because no doubt my car isn't perfectly the same one side to the other. You know, it's handmade. So um, check it actually looks right. Um, as well as measures right. So we'll do it the measuring way and then see if it looks right. If we measure it from the middle of the banjo, which I've marked there, you can see, and we know this is level, and we can do that. Sorry, we can do that. Right. Uh, we can mark a line there, then we can run it up to here. So I know from the middle of the banjo, that lines up with the middle of the banjo. If I measure the middle or between the side of the body there and there and find the midpoint, it's actually about five mil to the right. And just eyeballing it, that looks wrong. That looks too far to the right. So I'm going to use that as my mathematical middle. And then Probably I'm going to go touch that way. It just does. It still doesn't look quite in the middle to me. Right, well, using the measuring method, I've stuck a piece of pointy tape there as a marker. So now if we walk back, do we think that's in the middle? Okay, well, I had to shut the garage door because the wind was blowing the uh, plumb line. But you can see, I've gone back to the primitive Egyptian temple building method. Can I line the plumb line up with the little black mark there on the mid they sit in the middle on the banjo? And then where does that end up on our body? You can see my arrows is pretty good. Now I'm going to use some of these quick release fittings to hold the fairing on. So this has like a cam that goes in and then you quarter turn it. So um, this wire is held in place with rivets. And you see it's got springs each end, so it's free to move in and out a bit. Then this comes down over the wire and then quarter turn locks it. I don't know if you can, if the camera, there you are, you see. Now what I found is, see there's a lip there so if the if your two holes on the top panel and bottom panel are not perfectly aligned what happens is you release it and then the panels squidge slightly sort of slide relative to each other and then this lip catches on the hole in the lower panel you can't get it out um i'm not a huge fan of these but i've found a way around it one is you um bevel using a um, countersink the hole on the underside which helps stop it binding like that and of course the other way is to is to make the hole very slightly oversized um, and that helps as well so these may be great on a fiberglass kit car bonnet or something but um, I don't know in some cases I've had real trouble getting them out but I'm learning some tricks to uh, uh, kind of get around that so here's an example. I've beveled the underside of that hole with this countersink. It's slightly oversized. Um, I, I drill a hole using the spring. Obviously, the spring will go on the underside, but I'm using this springy thing as a guide. Then I'm putting a rivet through the hole I just drilled. And then I'm using the springy thing as a guide for the second hole. And the aim See, that one's just slightly off center actually. So the aim here is to have this piece of wire as it comes across smack in the middle of the hole, not offset. If it's offset, 
you get all sorts of trouble getting the little pen that twists in to come out it binds it gets stuck it's complete pain so the thing is to get them bang in the middle um, I'm running them this way because then the rivet heads this is all in reverse the rivet heads will be hidden under the strip of metal that runs along the edge of the fairing so I've driven drill one there I'm about to drill a hole there and then there's another one there and then at the end there'll be a different type of fixing which I'm dreaming up in my head as I speak now I've done something else here it's a bit unusual um, I needed to countersink where the rivet heads go so they're flush there's probably a special tool for this but I, if, if there is I don't have it I didn't use the countersink tools that I had because they've got a 90 degree bevel um, which meant you'd have to go practically all the way through the aluminium for the head to countersink. You need something with a, a shallower bevel. So I've made bevels like this, but I did it just using a, a large drill bit. And obviously I didn't push really hard to go through. You can even do it with the drill in reverse. Um, so I just gently pressed. So you see it's made a shallow recess but there's still about a mil and a half of aluminium there for the rivet to bite into otherwise the, riv the wrist your rivet just going straight through so you see there it's worked quite well i fitted that one the rivets are pretty flush and you'll notice the wire is in the middle of the hole which is the whole objective otherwise it does just doesn't work properly right the only way i found well, this is this works for me. Um, if I put a bit of tape, to hold the spring on with the rivets through, I can do the rivets up without the spring falling off, which is really annoying because then you've got a rivet that's put into a hole that's been riveted, as it were, and the spring's on the floor. So that's no good, is it? So that seems to work quite well, as long as you're careful with it. I should say for the rivets, I'm just using one of these cheap riveters. I do have one of those lazy tongs type ones um, but just for little rivets like this no, that's fine to be honest right this this sometimes happens with pop rivets they're meant to snap off the stems flush there but they don't just kind of annoy you really so I'm going to use Dremel with a cutting disc just to take it off The question is, will they fit? Let's get some clips and see. have a countersunk bolt straight through there into a tab of metal that sticks up to take it with a tap thread in it and then finally I'm going to put a tail cone on and trim this back so it perfectly skims the tail cone and if I get it wrong I'm going to make all this all over it no I'm not doing that again so I'm going to take that mega slow <laughs> so I don't want to mess that up I've moved the tab there was a tab there for one of these bolts but it was there so I've moved it cut it off rewelded it on underneath there where that's painted in black um, so now I'm going to put the cowl on the top um, drill a hole through through this into the steel tab underneath then tap a thread into it then I'll be able to put a countersunk bolt into the tip of this fairing to just hold it down here and I'm gonna to have to trim the end back so it lies neatly on here me
I'll do the same the other side. So I'm going to cut to the bottom of the lower one. So there'll still be too much metal there. I'll still need to take it back, but it's safer that way. It's much easier to take it off bit by bit than try and add metal back later. So I've now welded on a tab um, that more or less lines up with this arrow so I can have a bolt on the tip of the fairing that just is countersunk and goes straight in and is, uh, goes into there which has been tapped. So uh, that's the plan. Let's put it all together and see what happens now. I've spent about an hour and several of these flap discs taking this down and just taking bits off here and there so it's time to put it all back together and see what it looks like Right, I've got one countersunk bolt. This isn't actually long enough, but just to illustrate, it'll go in here. And that'll pull the end down tight. 